Oops! Pulled up the video by accident. What I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to get to Twitter. And when I get to Twitter, I want to look through and see what you guys said. This is promised, and I'm going to talk. No promises. Besides the promise. The more you think about it, the weirder it gets. The infinite universe. Does this infinity rather scare you or calm you? Now, okay. That calms the hell out of me. The fact that there is an endless, like, chance for anything, that makes me sleep so well at night. The problem with infinity is that the infinity is the very thing that we don't know what that is. Like, what is infinity? That is the quintessential unknown. So, if unknowns don't, you know, if everything has to be chopped up and separated and very easy to digest, then I can understand how infinity would be the scariest thing ever, because it is the embodiment of the unknown. However, the unknown sort of excites me, and I find that the unknown is usually an opportunity or a chance to do something great or learn something cool. So, given that worldview, of course, infinity is just like, oh man, that means there's endless amounts of potentially awesome stuff out there, both, you know, around us, like on a day-to-day -day sort of basis and like in the universe, anything. That is so cool to me, and that keeps me very, very happy thinking about it. Les Paul Nick. Okay, Les Paul Nick. This is a very, this is more down to earth. Should you do what career makes you happy? Or do a career will make you rich? And hashtag something. <laughs> nice cars, big houses, etc. Um, okay, well, it's very easy if you only derive pleasure from being rich. So if you're only happy when you have tons of money, then I don't think I have to answer this question. What I would say, though, is that it's much more important to be happy. I know a lot of a lot. In fact, most of the rich people I know are miserable. They are completely stressed out and only concerned about keeping their, you know, life, um, what do you call it? Standard of living. Yes, yeah, standard of living up to the par, which, like, they're used to it and they've grown accustomed to, and everyone around them has grown accustomed to it as well. They are so stressed out, though, like, a lot of times. And you know what's a lot better? Not being stressed out and having friends anyways, because you don't need money to have like the things that truly matter. Being it's like city economy right now, like a lot of times you have to work just to even, just to even survive. Like you have to work something you don't like. And you know, I wish I could say that that's definitely gonna change, but it doesn't always change. And that's, you know, that's terrible. But the thing to go after is to chase happiness, not to chase money. You should be working a job so that you can eat or something like that. You should just, you should manage to eat and be able to like keep yourself healthy and things like that. And besides that, you should work on what makes you happy. I know a lot of people right now, like friends and things like that, that are not happy where they are working because it's only for money. It's not because it satisfies them. So if you can slug that all aside, then like good for you. That's excellent. But remember, it's your life. And if you never get around to doing what you actually want to do, when are you going to do it? Which, by the way, get used to this if you don't like this, unsubscribe now because there's going to be a lot more of that. I want these to be uplifting, though. I don't want them to be like... Life is terrible and all this shit. Because I, I come off as much of, like, I come off as very cynical. And I am. Like, I'm positive beneath all that. Like, I just think cynicism is extremely funny, so I run with it. And, you know, nothing is hopeless. That's the big takeaway from this sort of thing. Is like, nothing is hopeless, and there's always a reason to keep on fighting. And at the end of the day, you're going to be dead anyway, so who cares? It's all fucking, you know, if it's all for naught anyways, then you might as well have a good run of it. And you might as well have fun, you know? Take a chance. Go out there and do something that, like, you want to do. Just take a chance. That's always... That's, that's like the best thing you could ever do in life is take a chance. If everything gets, if everything goes terrible, you know, that sucks, but so be it. At least you tried. And at least you have the satisfaction of knowing that you put yourself out there. There's a lot of people who just go through their entire goddamn life and they never ever risk anything. And, ah, uh, uh. The best part though is it's not even a risk a lot of the times. A lot of it is just, you're just too shy or you're, you're too caught up in your own crap to think clearly and you're just afraid of it for some reason you don't even know why anymore and so you just enables it, you just don't do things but you know this is I guess going back to that question about is it better to make you you know is it better to do what you like or to make money well I mean of course you should do what you want to do you know if you want to make money then you know god cool but I think that gets old you know like does it does like a yacht really make you happy a yacht is awesome a yacht is awesome but isn't the reason why you want a yacht so you can, like, bring your friends on it. What good is a yacht without any friends? Or without any, like, passions? Like, you have a yacht, like, who cares? You don't like anything. You don't want to go anywhere because you just have a yacht and you spent your whole life getting a yacht. Okay, here's an email from someone named Cam. Hey, Cam. How you doing? Um, 
I'm going to skip a lot of the, the stuff. I just want to get to like the meat of it. And thank you. I read all these emails and I know I don't respond that often, but you know what? It means a lot that you guys send them and I swear to God, I do read them all. I swear to God, I do. I just don't have to say always. I don't always have time when I'm running out the door. I don't, I'm on an iPhone in the subway. I don't have the internet, you know? Anyways, okay. Nearing the end of my education, I wanted nothing more to do with it and I wanted nothing to do with broadcasting. I finished the course and stuck it out. My question for you guys is, should I get back in the broadcasting field and see how it is? Should I seek further education? Should I seek another job to pay the bills? I don't know if you guys will ever read this. We read it! <laughs> but maybe you can offer some insight. Now, what I, what I would say is that you gotta eat, of course, so I would do whatever it would take to survive. And that's a lot of hard work, and that sucks. And you're very courageous for doing that. I would say there's nothing braver or more admirable in sort of the current day scenario that we find ourselves in a lot of time than doing something that allows you to take care of yourself and whoever you might have a dependent or something, I don't know. But having a job that you, you deal with to eat, and then in every bit of time that you have besides doing that job, you find a way to follow what you like. This entire city of New York is basically people who are waiters who don't want to be waiters because nobody came here to be a waiter. Everyone came here to do something else, but this city needs waiters still. And there are some career waiters, and they actually make good money, so I'm not going to knock them. But anyways, I mean, you know, the old stereotype of the starving artist definitely holds true. There are a lot of people who are just doing whatever they have to do just to eat. And on top of that, they're working something else, usually unpaid, and usually probably pretty intensive. And they're getting, you know, just for the chance one day that maybe they can do that is their job. And if you make it to that, then you've done, you've done the dream, you know? And there's no guarantees, and that's what sucks about it. But you have to try, because at least when you do that, you might get a small amount of satisfaction that at least you're working on what you want. Because there's nothing worse than just working and working and not having it be what you want it to be. Working, I don't find bad at all if it's something that's leading me somewhere, you know? Like, I didn't find school all that bad because I knew I'd get a degree someday, and then, you know, maybe I could get a job or something. Like, that's yet to come to fruition, of course. But, you know, goals. Set goals for yourself. And also, make sure you like those goals. They don't have to be somebody else's goals. You get to pick the goals, okay? Pick goals you like. You don't have to please anyone. If someone demands that you please them, well, that's not fair. It doesn't matter, like, if you're an adult, it's not fair. It's like your parents tell you you have to be something you don't have to do that. It's, it's just, you know, this is where it gets really tough because there's some people in your life that like, like your parents. You just don't want to, like, say, well, I'm done with you then. You know, you, you, you don't want to do that. But there has to be compromise, and people have to realize, and you need to explain to them, <laughs> you need to tell them if they're holding you down and making you do stuff like that, that that's not for me. Like, it's, you're killing me by making me do this. If you're in a scenario, though, in which you're able to just take control of your own life, you don't have a kid, you don't have a dependent, you don't have someone watching your children, then be your own person. Develop who you are. Never be afraid, and this goes for relationships as well. I know a lot of people who are in relationships, and because it's like their partner, they can't do what they want to do or something. They, and there's a million reasons why, so why get into it? But, you know, be yourself. Work on yourself. Work on your talents. Make yourself happy. Only you can make yourself happy. It's not somebody else's responsibility. It's yours. So, in short, Cam, what I would say is if clearly you don't like your, what you're doing in communications and things like that, then get out of it. Maybe you could use whatever degree you have right now because maybe you could find a job at communications to just pay the bills, but you don't have to worry about it being like a life career. What, you said here that you're maybe 20s, like early 20s? I'm sorry, I didn't read it exactly, but if, if you graduated, I'm, I'm assuming you're younger. So that means you have plenty of time in the world, okay? You just, just make a little money and figure out what you want to do. Just figure it out. There's no rush. You don't even ever have to figure it out fully. It's fine. Just make yourself happy. Don't slave away at something you hate. Get out of the thing. Get out of there. <laughs> okay, this is enough of this. I'm going to cut through this and see if this even worked out at all. Here's the vlog. Here's what I did yesterday. 144! Ah! Not even thinking about it. But I'm still, I'm steamed about it. I'm not happy. I spent $6 on a cupcake and I had to throw it out. So I'm... Mmm, that's splitting hairs, but whatever.
Here I am in Soho looking for Harrison because I don't think I could stand listening to Jeff have phone sex anymore through Skype. I love Jeff and I love his internet girlfriend or whatever she is, but I don't want to hear it. <laughs> also, a surprise guest, we have Bobby today. Oh. Oh, hey. Yeah, doing the corner dance? Where's Bobby? I came for Bobby. I know, I know. We're, we're going to be him. Oh, okay. This is funner. I get to be there at first meeting. This is this is where I work. So I don't know if you should. Well, maybe you should. I don't know. <laughs> Just not tell him that. Uh, also, or well, he doesn't really matter because they know where I work and there's an address. Whatever. Who gives a shit? Who cares? If someone wants to kill you, they're gonna. Oh, and yeah. you should be fucking thankful that if someone you wants to. Presence, you can be found. Yeah. If you have a presence, you can be found. Um, if you're not. I really kind of want to go a little green bow, even though I've been there already. Yeah. If we're looking for Chinese food, because it was really good. All right. And like, when I have really good Chinese food, I just want to go back there a hundred times. So. Word. All right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna meet Basha, like a friend of ours, at seven. Basha. Okay. Yeah. Soho is kind of cool. Everyone's really tall and beautiful. Are you, oh, are, are you did? Okay. All right. Head head west. Looking for Bobby. Bobby's world. We're in Houston in Worcester. 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 I don't see Bobby. Wait. No, we just passed. We just passed Worcester too. Where are you? He's got to be. Look are you on the phone. other side? Are you on the north side? <laughs> oh, fuck. Really? We're gonna oh. run. We're gonna run. We're gonna run. Okay. Right. See ya. Oh, car. Okay, we can go if we go right now. No, no, no. No, we can fine. It's fine. Hey, Bobby. What? <laughs> you all bundled up. You're so cute. Yo, uh, how you, you been, man? Yeah, not too bad, man. Not too bad. Yo, guess what? Surprise! Holy shit! You're bringing it out again. Yeah, I know. That looks good. I look like the bonds right now. I know. Very... How many? Yeah, how many bulges are there in Manhattan? Cause um, there's the one up on uh, 42nd. There's the bulge. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's there, like huge. There's the bulge fire state building. And the bulge fire. There's one on 34th also. It's huge. This is a double bulge though, and it's. Red and blue, so it's kind of patriotic. That's neat. So, uh, what do does you wanna Bobby look like with the hair? Do you want to give us a call when we get back? Does he look like with, um, when we get back into the city? I mean, like, like a little bit like, uh, like Al Pacino and um, La Gaffa, but also um, yeah, we'll be like Keanu Reeves. Just and, give um, us a call when you get into the, the city. Advocate. He's got the Marty McFly yeah. jacket. And it's got like the Widow's Peak right there. Oh, he does. He has a little, right, little, a little bit. Yeah. Little yeah. Right, Holly, we're trying little peak. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to figure this out. Who like, I don't know. Now we're back in the heart of Chinatown. I'm bringing him back to that place, little green bow, B O what? Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just doing my thing. No, sorry, I was like, no, no, no. I got confused. <laughs> Weird <laughs> shit, dude. Oh man, I'm just gonna throw the I got to film you doing it some sort of routine later. Every time you're in the vlog, I want you to dance. I'm gonna completely exploit the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah. That was a dance. Yeah, that counts. <laughs> that totally counts. Check out my fancy feet. You can check out the feet. Ready? Okay. Oh. God, those are fancy. That's a house step. <laughs> the beef and something are like really good. The beef and something? The beef and something and vegetable something. Okay. Look at that hot tea go. Hot tea. Hot tea, baby. These are, okay, these are dumplings with soup inside of the, the dumpling or something? Be yeah. Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> This is such a cool little thing. It's filled with pork sauce and like soup. It's so cool. I gotta film it. I gotta make it come in focus. It's really good. It's really hot. There we go. Oh my good god, that looks so good. Okay, hit them baby feet. Get in, get in there. Oh, lost the baby feet. Baby mooned you. Baby moon me. Yeah. Cool, so we had dinner, and that was really good, as always. And now we're going to the Tim and Eric movie on, uh, it's on Houston Street. Yeah. Stupidest theater name. What's the name of the theater? Uh, Landmark Sunshine. Landmark Sunshine well, Theater. Well, uh, so, so, so uh, Landmark is, is the name of the chain, uh -huh. and I, Sunshine's the name of the theater. Oh, that's really... Or or it's just Landmark Sunshine. It's one of the two. I don't know. Okay. It's, it's a national chain, but there's only one in New York. Okay, I've never heard of one, but it sounds stupid, but it has Tim and Eric, so who cares? But um, there's a, there a little baby at dinner. The baby was cute. Baby Ray. That was cute. I wish Ricky would have been there. I know. She could have freaked out. <laughs> I'm going to tell her that this vlog needs a baby. We should just have a baby. I love fucking babies. We could all take care of it. Wouldn't it be great? You could be Pop Pop. Yeah. I'll go tell her. Let's go pitch that to her now. You could be Uncle Harry. Uncle Bones. Uncle Bones. Uncle Bones. Uncle Bones, yeah. Aw. That's his nickname, by the way. And him and Bobby go back to added Disinfinium. Like middle school. That's awesome, man. It's like me and Alex. Yeah. He's 
I, I have like four Alex's. Uh -huh. Four or five Alex's. Because you're so popular. Cool, yeah. Well, yeah, well, you grew up in I like, only hell, have one Alex. You grew up in hell. I grew <laughs> yeah. up with like. Awesome yeah, people. no. Like, Alex was the only kid who wasn't worth shooting in the face from my hometown. This is my favorite sticker so far. Big sticker says dolphins rape people. Oh, wow. It's like a, like almost like a public notice, though. Rape it. it is a rape <laughs> joke, but it's still funny. Yeah. Oh, this theater sucks so much. I hate lines. Fancy. Fancy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh. What? So we see. Oh, well, they the true have, intent, yeah. The true I mean, intent. I want to pop too, but they used to have these rose ones here that I really like. Like, rose bowl. Rose. Right. Oh, I did that thing to my mouth. I'm serious. <laughs> Honey. Honey. I want to find the rose <laughs> one. I'm serious. Like, I really like it. And, like, there's nowhere else. It might not be a rose one, honey. There it is. You got it? Yes. Where? It's in the we got to buy them all up. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Shoot. Here, I'll help. Oh, wait, my, no, no, here. With my one oh, hand. Gonna push it? Right. I'm going to push cool. it. Cool. Okay. Let's I'm the pusher. It. I'm your pusher, man. Is there, there another go. one? And another one. I've done all this trouble. And another one. And another one. Another one. Oh well, you're just gonna have to settle for more Jesus candles. St. Anthony though, he's a looker. It's fucking raining outside, so I gotta put my scarf. I enjoyed Tim and Eric. Um, had its ups and its downs. It had some big hits, I thought, and some, you know, some complete misses, kind of like the show. Very much like the show in that sense, but not at all really feeling like the show. What? <laughs> I did just barely fit. What do you think, hon? What? I don't know. I mean, I was kind of disappointed. Okay, that's weird. I mean, like, I, I didn't. I didn't think it, it could have been better, I thought, of course, but like, I, I enjoyed it, you know? Especially after seeing all the other shit we've been seeing recently, oh my god. <laughs> five sausage pizza. <laughs> awesome. I, I don't think I can name five animals. <laughs> <laughs> sure only $10, though, I'll tell you that much. I can only name $10. <laughs> no. Five dollars. Don't. Don't what? Tell us about the air dogs, Ricky. <laughs> Tell us about the air dogs. <laughs> let's, have a, let's have a shot of Wyatt's nipples and you talking about the air dogs <laughs> at the cherry fest. <laughs> Come on. Tell us, Aunt oh, Ricky. There it is. Oops, Which one? Ultimate, ultimate air dogs, July 7th through the 9th, 2011. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here we go. I'm showing you YouTube. You're on YouTube. <laughs> Fucking. I'm not even gonna move the mouse. You can see. Okay, well, we're watching the air dogs. <laughs> this is, uh, this, Ricky was the cherry queen one here. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you are. You're beautiful. Now, this is a fast little dog. He'll jump really hard for himself. Now, you guys can cheer. Our dogs actually do better if you cheer for them. Okay? I bet they do. Jitterbug. Go, Jitterbug, go. Air dogs. <laughs> Woo! I'm addressing the first question. Will I get happiness in this life? Zen is the only answer. Be totally, completely surrendering to the present. Past is dead, future is unknown. But the instant when recognized and acknowledged is loaded with happiness. It is like unloading a box of freshly received groceries. Happiness. You are happy, Wyatt. That is your secret. I think I agree. 